Dr. Doreen Grand is the Dr. Doreen is an expert in autism. Doreen Grand Dr. Graham Pichet. Dr. Doreen Grand Pichet. Dr. Doreen Grand Pichet is a visionary in the field of autism. Now you can ask her questions on Ask Dr. Doreen. Andre says, hi, Shannon and Dr. Doreen. I think this, this one cuts me right to the core. Sometimes I find myself in conflict between putting yeah. too much pressure on my son with his intervention demands and just accepting him the way he is. Is there a balance? Andre, I am hugging you and telling you that you are a part of our tribe. But I think this is yeah. where it's all at. Right this there. is a great question, Andre. This is a fabulous question because I think a lot of people probably struggle with this as well. I mean, I know like even with typically developing kids, you as a parent, you can go to extremes, right? You can completely let the child just do nothing. Or you could be a parent who is wanting to teach their child every sport and every language and every musical instrument and everything there is under the sun. Now, with our kids, what happens is obviously with the interventions, there's very little time for them left to do just free time, right? So I think it becomes really important to balance out priorities and to write them out, actually, and talk to yourself. Like sometimes parents will say to me, uh, you know, can we make sure that he learns math? In fact, I'm going through this right now with a family that I'm working with, and they really want their child to learn math. And uh, the child doesn't speak yet. And I told them, I'm happy to teach him math, but give some consideration to which one is more important to you, uh, communication, language, or math. Because, you know, you sometimes you just have to select and you can't, you just, there's not enough time to do everything. So I would say what you should do is you should take a look at your child's basic needs at this particular time, right? And so, you know, what are some, and, and the, way not, the way I look at it is just consider skill areas that need strengthening. So for example, does he need work on speech and language? Does he need work on social uh, behavior, communication, play, that sort of thing? Um, is academics an issue right now? Uh, depending on his age, some of the priorities could be uh, safety uh, issues or you know, daily living, adaptive behavior at home. What are the priorities of things that you would like him to focus on and learn? That's one thing. And then what are some of the additional things that you kind of have to do in real life? Like, for instance, a lot of times kids are school age. So now we kind of have to add some academics to their schedule. We don't have a choice. That's just the way it is. And we have to have a certain amount of time for academics. So that is another consideration. And, and then when you've done all of that, of course, you will look and say, well, I really also want to have, let's say, an hour a week or, you know, four hours a week where it's just nothing and it's the whole family and we're just having fun and goofing around and, and enjoying doing nothing. And so you write all those things out. And when you have them on like a visual you'll come to, you'll and start reducing one and increasing the other and see how you feel, right? Because sometimes a parent will be like, God, I got, I think I, I'm giving him now too much free time and I'm kind of getting nervous because the language stuff is falling behind or the other way around. Like, it sounds like you, you feel like you want to give him a little bit more free time, which is completely fine. The other thing, so once you've balanced that, one thing I want you to remember is that if you're doing intervention like ABA, for instance, where it's like intensive tutoring, it is supposed to also be fun. It's not supposed to be an aversive activity. It's supposed to be interactive, packed with reinforcers, 
Um, it's almost like, you know, when ABA works, you feel like the child has found his tribe and they understand him and he cannot wait to do this therapy because it's so much fun. So, and if that's not the case, then you need to kind of have a conversation with your ABA team or whatever team, honestly, your school team, your speech team, whatever they are, and just tell them, I need you to make it a little bit more rewarding because he's spending a ton of time with you. And I really want him to have a little bit more fun than, than he is right now. Or reduce that activity, increase reinforcers during that activity, give him more breaks. There's lots of ways that you can kind of manipulate his day and schedule so that you feel he is not getting too much and he is enjoying it and he's still learning. Um, and, and of course, that the whole family feels like you're paying attention to important things like fun time and family time. Yes, we love the fun. We did a whole show about that last week about prioritizing the fun. And I want to say that, you know, I loved everything that you said, Dr. Grampy Shea, but there's the other part of it where I, I see that in my tribe of parents, there are those of us who we've worried for so long, we don't know how to stop worrying. And I just want to say, you know, so Dr. Grampy Shea told you all the things to consider, but, but she told you that your child has to be having fun. So yeah. I want to say to the parent, you also have to have fun that uh, Temple Grandin said to me that the most important thing that I needed to be doing was having time that I spent with my husband where we didn't worry about autism, didn't talk about autism. I'm still trying to figure out how to do that. Like, like I don't, I don't want to pretend for anybody that I figured that out, but I think that those are the things that are important. And we were taught to celebrate every single moment that we could. And I will say that that's my favorite thing about my family is that our little family, which is only three people, we found ways to just celebrate. Whether yeah. it was when the day of therapy was over, we would put on one song and just dance until the song was over. And then we would start dinner and bath time and all the bedtime ritual stuff. Um, or, you know, sometimes we went to Disneyland. And, and it was like, you know, that's going to be the thing that we're going to do because we live close to Disneyland or, you know, go to Chuck E. Cheese or something where you take a moment out and say, we're going to prioritize this because we have to model having fun and relaxing for our kids or they don't know how to. Absolutely. And that's, you know, so I'm sending you a hug because I think a lot of us um, live in the neighborhood of what you were talking about. Yeah. And I, it's so funny you mentioned that, Shannon, and I, you know, now that my kids are adults, they all remind me of times that they had the most fun, like memories. Yeah. And it's always times when I was having fun as well. Yep. So it's very interesting that kids actually have a tremendously good time if you're also happy and your anxieties or your fears or sadnesses also do affect them quite a bit. And it doesn't have to be, I mean, I'm sorry that I said Disneyland because that seems like such a, you know, huge thing. It doesn't have to be that. We, I was talking with my son recently about good times that we remember. And one of the most fun times was when we had a terrible storm here in LA. It was gale yeah. force winds and stuff. And we were driving home and I was actually worried and I didn't want my son to know that we were worried. So we decided to play the drive home like it was a video game. Yeah. And when the, when the palm fronds would come, we would go incoming and, you know, and yell and, and, you know, change lanes to get around it and laughed the whole way home. And, and, he, he, loved was, it. Yeah. and he said to me the other day, I think of that some times when I'm in a real situation about how can I make it fun to get through it. That's a great life lesson. Amazing. Uh, I need to do more of that. If you found anything helpful in this video, please give us a like. In fact, make sure that you smash that subscribe button on YouTube and give us a like on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter and Instagram for important updates. And please download our free podcast wherever you get your podcasts. See you next time. Until then, give your kiddos a hug from me and one for you too. Bye-bye for now.
to subscribe, click here. And if you'd like to check out some more of our videos, click here. Don't forget, you can watch Ask Dr. Doreen live every Tuesday morning at 10 a.m. Pacific time on autismnetwork.com. We hope to see you there.